What's up, folks? Welcome back to Tactical Tortoise. My name is Trevi, and a couple weeks ago, I covered some controversy from a recent in-person 40k GT, at which a very prominent 40k player was caught on camera cheating by falsifying dice results to their opponent. For example, rolling one thing and telling them the result was something entirely different many times during the game on camera. The player in question was summarily punished with a one-year ITC ban, stripped of their prize support from the event, and hit with a number of other minor sanctions by their local leagues. Recently, they released a statement that I'd like to go over in this video as a way of capping off this story and letting their statement be heard after everything that was said in my previous video. Now, in the original video, I didn't talk about the cheater by name. The 40k community tends to be fairly tight-knit, and while I'm all for holding people accountable for their actions, stirring up drama of that kind tends to just devolve into little tribalist flame wars, especially where quote-unquote big name 40k players are involved. But given the context of their statement in response to the cheating allegations, I think it's okay to talk about them personally at this point. The cheater in question was TJ Lanigan, a former Art of War team member and current 40k coach whose coaching service is still active, by the way. Put a pin in that. We'll talk about that later. And overall, pretty recognizable name in the community. Now, I realize I'm not particularly quick on the draw with this particular piece of news, but as a follow-up to my other video, I want to go through TJ's statement and cover his responses to the whole ordeal in detail. His letter was posted to the Spiky Bits news website, and I'll put a link in the description down below so that you can read along with me. But in his opening statement, TJ fully admits that he cheated during the game in question and takes full responsibility for his actions. He also apologizes to his opponents and anyone who may not have enjoyed their games against him, and later asks any TO or player with criticisms of his conduct to reach out for him to voice their thoughts. He mentions that he fully accepts his punishment, pledges to take an additional three months off of competitive Warhammer 40k, I guess to collect his thoughts and reassess approach to the game. Let's put another pin in that one for now. And in his closing statements, TJ reiterates his responsibility in the situation and describes the position that he'd like to live up to as a quote-unquote pillar of the 40k community. Now, before I say anything else about this statement, I do want to appreciate that TJ's response to the situation is very measured and very mature. Too often I've seen situations like this in 40k and other games devolve as the player under scrutiny doubles down and gets very defensive, or even worse, puts the onus back on the community at large by like throwing straw man excuses out, saying things like, oh, it was a mistake. I bet everyone has done something like that in a game before. It's just disgusting. Those interactions have a tendency to draw out the drama and make the guilty party look even worse, and a lot of times just end their time in the community entirely. But TJ takes total responsibility, he admits his wrongdoings, and I think that's great. In my previous video, I mentioned that I was in favor of an immediate lifetime ban in situations like this. The 40k community already sort of has a sour reputation among the larger tabletop gaming space, and ejecting people with this kind of conduct will begin the process of reversing that stigma. Ultimately, that decision is not up to me, and the ITC administration opted for the punishment they did, and I think that this is the best result we could hope for. A respectful acceptance of guilt and pledge to do better in the future by the indicted party. That said, there are a couple things that rub me the wrong way about TJ's statement. He words his opening statement in a way that sounds like his actions were something that are just frowned upon by the community rather than a literal rules infraction. I'm not entirely sure that was the intended meaning of the sentence, but I'd like to say, just so there's no ambiguity here, dice falsification is a rules breach. And it's also a much more serious infraction than just misplaying mechanics or getting rules wrong. Those things can be checked and corrected very easily, but generating dice results without your opponent's ability to verify them is a breach of your opponent's trust and the game's social contract. And falsifying those results is absolutely a breach of the rules text literally as well. I don't really want to dig too deeply into all of the exact pros that TJ used in his letter. One thing that the community sometimes forgets about 40k quote-unquote celebrities is that they're just regular people who play 40k and don't have media teams or agents who smooth over statements like this to, to make sure the wording is bulletproof and they sound as good as possible. But in the letter, TJ does pledge to take three months off of competitive 40k. And as I said earlier in the video, despite this controversy and the statement, TJ's coaching service, Lords of Chaos, is still active and he's still giving advice to paying customers on a regular schedule. 
Now, I'm not going to pretend that this service is a huge deal making money hand over fist, but if you're going to make a big show about stepping away from the competitive game for several months, continuing to make competitive 40k content and sell competitive 40k services makes you look insincere at best. After all, if you are actually going to take a three-month break from the game with a competitive metagame that works as quickly as 40k does, how much actual advice do you think you would be giving to players? Or is the plan just to sell them out-of-date information? But in reality, if you're still a coaching client of TJ Lanigan after his actual play skill and all of his past accomplishments are thrown into question by this cheating, I really need to ask you the question, why? Anyway, that's all I have to say about this. I really just wanted to bring up TJ's statement in response to the cheating allegations I talked about in the previous video and let his voice be heard a little bit. I do hope that we don't have to cover news stories like this one too often and that the 40k community can finally get past its stigma of not being the greatest one ever. Thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Big thanks to my patrons over at patreon.com slash tacticaltorius, as well as YouTube channel members and Twitch subscribers. All those people are awesome. I really appreciate them. And I appreciate you for watching to this end of the video, the real end of the video. Remember to keep it classy, folks, and... Have happy wargaming.